our feature presentation. Action on the life. He that believe it in me, though you are dead, yet shall you live. And whosoever live it and believe it in me shall never die. Believe thou this. For we have brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hear the first one. We are going to sing the Hopeman hymn. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful arm. Guide me, O Let us all bow our heads at this time. 
guide O great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, we are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with your powerful hand. Loving eternal Father and Jesus Christ, our loving Savior, we thank you, Lord, for turning mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be here on this path of ground. Lord God, where we come to share our sympathy with the bereaved family. Oh, God of the passing of our loved one. Loving Father, we invite and invoke your presence here among us at this time. We ask, O oh God, what to be said and done, O oh God, it is done under your authority and under your will. Loving Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you lead and direct us. O oh God, let your purpose, let your will be done. Loving Father, remember the bereaved family at this time. Oh God, we ask that you touch them in a special way. Oh God, we know, oh God, the loss of a loved one. Oh God, it, it can be difficult, it can be, oh God, mixed feelings. But loving Father, because we know that you're acquainted, oh God, with our grief and our pain. So therefore, Lord, we cast our cares upon you. Have your own divine sweet way at this time. Oh God, bless us continually. And as we humble look to you and tell you thanks, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are thanking God for prayer. And we are expecting to have a wonderful Thanksgiving service this evening. I want to say to the family and friends, enjoy yourself. You must be grieving. It's a hard thing to lose a loved one. But I ask that everybody that comes this evening will just cheer up one another, bless one another, and help that this program will go through in a good fashion way. God bless. I want to say Deacon Brown was a, was a lively person. Yes. He was a real Christian person. And as I am standing here this evening, I don't have anything to say that is bad about him. But yet, I am not a judge. So we are thankful and we are blessed this evening. And so we want to just continue in this old-fashioned way. Everybody sing. Who can sing, sing. Who can clap, clap. And make we just do the thing and do it good and done. All right? Blessing. First on our program, as we come to enjoy, Hedrick Elisha Brown, you know? Thanksgiving service. First on our program now going down. First lesson will be read by a dreamy. Dick. If I don't pronounce the first name, good. He's not here, so Arlene is doing it. All right. Protocol is being observed. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feather, than under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Twelve and last, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. 
here ended the words of the Lord. This is a thanksgiving service for Deacon Brown. So come on, praise the Lord! I'm from Old Arbor Bay, Fire Baptist Church of God. I'm gonna just sing this song. This train I'm riding, they said it's leaving to a place in the sky. And the pilot will be my Jesus to the mansion way up in the sky. So don't be grieving. Come on, church. And we know that he live a life, and we have no doubt that he gone to heaven. And we are asking the family members to please come together in the bands of love, peace, and unity. Hallelujah. Amen. Make him enjoy this day with our game, the passing of our brother. Amen. Amen. This is a mixed feeling, but make him be happy. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy, happy, happy.
God Almighty God we serve. Hands and bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angel bow before Him. To take care of all his children when they are going through some rough times in their lives. When it seems that all around you is falling and the devil tells you you cannot win only believe put your faith and your trust in the lord he will deliver right on time before the day is over I know he lifts your heavy burden. He's a faithful friend to all who love and trust him. There is nothing to hard for my God to do. He's the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. There is no one like
scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 50, verse 1 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither though it corruption, inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have on immortality, then shall be be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God, of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is a reading of the This is a portion of the reading of God's holy word. Jesus! Hallelujah! Driving all the way from Mavis Bank to be here, it's just a easy task. But because of Brother Brown, yes. when we leave uh, Mavis Bank come at convention and any program on at Fount Hill, we can always look for Brother Brown. He give us a, a, a good smile, a good laugh. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I know what the family and the wife feeling today because I buried my mother just in December here. It's not an easy task. But ride out your storm. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And we're going to leave this song with the family this, um, this afternoon. It is not easy. But if you live a life, you will see Brother Brown again. Amen. Hallelujah. All of you who are going through some misfortune in your life, try not to worry. Because the Lord is on your side. What are you have going through? He make a way for you. For I know, I know that the sun will shine again. I say, I know.
morning that God was going to call your name. In life we loved you dearly, in death we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you. The day God called you home, you left us peace in peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide, and though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. From Sister Verona Thousand and the family. Thank you. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank everyone who is here today, and for those who could not make it but send their condolences. All of us have known him in a variety of roles, father, husband, uncle, cousin, and friend. But myself and many others have been privileged to know him as grandfather, or papa as we called him. It is within this context that I will share the memories we all had. Each and every one of us has our fair share of memories with papa, but I'm sure that we all can agree that he was a very hardworking man. The first time Papa rode out on his bike to sell ice cream, upon reaching the Roselle community, a car ran in the road and his bike overturned. He had to return home, but he was so determined and committed to his family that the following week he was out again. <laughs> Papa was an early bird and he ensured that when he was awake, everyone in the house was awake as well. He would always say, get up, get up, say on a prayer, remember on a keep off on yourself. Play for wash and something for look for eat. <laughs> Oftentimes we would try to sleep in, especially in the summers, but best believe we all had to get up promptly when we heard Papa reaching for the belt. <laughs> summers were always fun when all the grandchildren came to spend holiday. We mostly look forward to the end of to the end where Papa would call us and give us all our little pay for working with him during the pimento season. <laughs> We were so disappointed when Papa gave us $500 each. <laughs> Almost if not all the children and grandchildren can remember shelling gungo peas, which we all found our own cunning ways to lessen the work. I can remember in the nights after, after we all had dinner, we would invade Papa's bedroom where he would tell us stories about his childhood and Nancy and Duppy stories. After hearing the scary stories, none of us wanted to go to our rooms. He also loved to travel, and church trips were exciting. Food was a big part of these trips, and Papa would always ensure that there's a lot of meat available. He was, he was a man who loved his meat. On the way, he would always ensure that you know where you are. Even in his final days going to the hospital, he would say, I hear so name so. <laughs> to die is to be forgotten, so Papa is not dead because his memories live on. Thank you. Church of God of the Americas. All right, please give a listen here. Um, Deacon Frederick Elisha Brown. Born on December 3rd, 1934. Brother Mansi, Deacon Brown, he was a star. He was a singer, he was a dancer, and also he was a preacher. Deacon Brown became a member of the Far Baptized Holiness Church of God of the Americas on the 16th of September, 1984. Deacon Brown always tell how he got his calling, and I'll say as he would say it. He said, he got his calling. I was in my bed with my girlfriend at the time when I heard a boy singing, come where the true drops of mercy are bright shine all around me by day and by night jesus the light of the world i walked to the children's room but everyone was sleeping then i realized it was the voice of god calling me during the 36 years of service 
Deacon Brown visited many churches in different parishes. He was also willing to do the work of God. He was always studying his Bible and studying the Word of God. Deacon Brown loved to sing when we go to church trip and no one wants to render an item. That was called, and once he was there, then you could look for him. His parent pal was Deacon Wallace, going to help him. Whether we are in the community or we go out to other parishes. His favorite songs, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. I must have the Savior with me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. If I have a wing like a dove, all to Jesus I surrender. Since I met you, Jesus, I'm a happy man. His favorite scripture, Psalm 1, Psalm 91, and Daniel chapter 3. Deacon Bond always have an encouraging word for everyone. We miss him. And he will be forever in our hearts. You know, during the last visit to church, which was on the 12th of July, we all talked to him, uh, the pastor put our phone on speaker, and everybody would say hello to him. And I tell you that Deacon Brown was always grateful. All the time we called, we talked to him, he always said, thank you, bless the name of Jesus, bless the name of Jesus. And even in this last time, you know, we can see that he was feeling so much pain. But God knows everything. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. In the first part, I'll say this. I'm going to ask, who used to get beaten for Uncle Manson? <laughs> ah, I am the lucky one. No, me never used to get none. Um, you know where the turn off is to get to Fontaine. So back in the very early days of the 60s. So don't ask me age, I'm just I tell you that. <laughs> Uncle Mansi used to come meet me from a bus. I don't know how my mother worked it out, you know. And he used to carry me on his back. Right up to where mommy used to live. Auntie Shirley know the name of the place. She always call it. Me don't know that thing there. Now, there's another part of it, to go up to our grandfather, it's Davis Mountain, right? Yes. He used to do the same thing too. He used to carry me upon him back, pick up at Davis Mountain. So I always tell them, so boy, you look like I'm here in the favorite one, because when everybody else are walk, <laughs> Uncle Bansi I carry me upon him back. When them do anything bad and have to run, I'm not sure if them did beat or me did beat, you know, but I mean, whenever me I get beaten. <laughs> but, the one thing you know about Uncle Mansi in the later years is that you never went to a function that he was at and he wasn't singing. And Uncle Mansi always sing at every function he went to. Back in St. Anne, where he, when he came to repair the roof of our house, Uncle Mansi had sing too. It wasn't a function, I mean, you know what I mean? So that's one of the things that um, we we'll all will miss about Uncle Mansi. Now the part about eating meat, I know that are true. Those of us who grew up in the country know one thing we say, if you decide to have a prayer, so my aunt over there said, Precious, you know the rule, my family always have a prayer for everything. We learn, those of us who come from Kingston, learn something very quickly from the country one day. Don't lock your eye when them are praying. <laughs> Because when you wake, when your eye open back, your me gone. And the only good news, if Uncle Mans is at the table, you, you, you will get meat again. I wanna know, Bev? Delroy, 
That's why I don't want me meat. If I never Uncle Man say, we we'll probably won't get meat. But that Uncle Man was like that, and I see as everybody speak about him. I think you are speaking the truth. From what you say, it's the same kind of experience we have. Now, we are going to read the eulogy, um, Yvine and I. And we were very close to Uncle Mansi because when he came to Lysa, him carried Delroy with a bat, you know. <laughs> so I'm seeing the eulogy, them saying, love cricket. Delroy came to Lysa with us. We were from St. Anne. All of us used to come to Mami in, in Lysa, in um, Easter, in summer. You know, say, we may check it out. And nearly 20 hours, you know? Yes. And nearly 20 hours at that time. And Delroy always have him bat. And three, three of the little ones, they know, say, can't play cricket when we did it. Because we began, we have to get the bat first. Mm. Delroy, you can't play cricket yet? <laughs> this is the eulogy of Frederick Mansi Brown. Born December 3, 1939, in Fontaine, St. Thomas. The sixth child of Edgar Brown and Henrietta da Costa. He attended the Fontaine Basic School, and at the early age of 10, he migrated to Kingston. He then attended Wellington Town Elementary School. After some time, he returned to St. Thomas and finished his schooling at Fontaine Elementary, where he became a monitor at the institution. Back, Back home in St. Thomas, he took up farming as his profession. In his farming life, he raised pigs, cows, and planted a lot of long-term and mixed crops, which he called catch crops. He was a very hard worker. Even on the weekends, he would go and sell ice cream in the district. He later went back to Kingston to work with his father and also learned the trade masonry. He, he, was a, he was a huge cricket fan and enjoyed playing the sport with his cousins, Poons, Robert, and friends. But he never could find the boundary. However, he did better with the ball. He was swift to run you out with those tall legs of his. He was also a member of the community sports club, and he was a, where he was a treasurer, and where he traveled to other parishes to, to, to represent his community. He started his family at the early age of 19 years old with Leete. This union produced five children, two of which are deceased. He then met Shirley in 1966 and got married and baptized in 1984. This other union produced seven children. He spent 36 years in the fire baptized church as a deacon. He loved to pray and sing, and it was a joy to hear him do so. In 1999, he traveled to England to spend some time with his sister and brother. He later made two visits to Cuba to do surgery on his eyes. Mr. Brown was a person who never missed his appointment with his doctor. Sometime in mid-July, he went to the doctor where he got a referral. After the examination and some follow-up checks were done, it was discovered that he suffered from a heart disease. This disease led him to, uh, to be admitted at the Princess Margaret Hospital on September 2nd, 2020. Within five days, he was out and home with his family. In October 23rd, he was admitted for the second time. Mr. Brown was a strong man, so within a week, he was home again. In his last days, he was surrounded by his, his daughter's sons, granddaughters, who all turned in to make sure he didn't miss the appointments. On, On the, the night of November 18, 2020, 2020, one of his daughters, Annie, went to visit him. 
when he told her that he would want to see his doctor. She obeyed and called the other brothers and sisters, and they all took him to the hospital. Mr. Brown knew that his time had come. He was so loved that his granddaughter, Odisha, could not sleep that night knowing that knowing her grandfather was at the hospital. He died the following morning, November 19, 2020, at 8.55 a.m., leaving his wife, his step-grand Anthony, ten children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, three sisters, four brothers, nieces, nephews, church family, and other, other relatives, relatives and friends. friends. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. Don't come searching if you don't find me. You know that I'm gone. And if you don't hear from me, don't come knocking on my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of a night. So don't be grieving because he's leaving. Don't be crying, just say goodbye. There'll be no weeping. Where is going to the mansion? wonderful name of Jesus. This afternoon, I must say to God, we give the glory. To God, we give the praise. On behalf of the members and the pastors of Pilgrim Church of God in Tower Hill, we do extend our deepest sympathy to the Browns family. And not only to the Browns family, but to the church family and the community family. Praise the name of Jesus. And debt we will never get used to debt it's not like some of us maybe come live in your community maybe take a two weeks to get into that person and know the person and used to the person but when it comes to debt brothers and sisters we will never use to debt hallelujah and because of that when you hear one crying around the corner of the passing of their loved one we can't pass no assertion we have to weep with them that do weep hallelujah and rejoice with them that do rejoice and this afternoon i must say my deepest deepest sympathy goes to the browns family again and the church family i won't be long so don't worry yourself i happen to being around Brother Brown, when I came to convention in Front Hill, and I actually rocked with everybody in Front Hill when I come here at church, you know, and I admired the Deacon Brown so much that when he is on the move for God, he give it his all. Yes. He put out his all yes. in the service of God. Amen. 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 And for the short bit of time we're going to be here, whatever we are doing, we're going to put out our best. Yes. Because he's no nonsense person when it comes down to worship. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That we are 
in the pandemic where COVID is basically have everybody wondering uh, and have everybody in a very comfortable situation. Let us let us continue to maintain our social distancing with our mask, but that won't stop us to give the Lord thanks this afternoon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And for some of us, I I I, I listen to the, um, the eulogy, <laughs> and before the eulogy read, I was I was checking on the on the on the time that Brother Brown was here and hurt. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a, I got about 81 years of age. Not yet, not yet. Not yet? All right. But nevertheless, it's, it's somewhere near there. But anybody do, that do understand cricket so much, I think Deacon Brown has played a wonderful innings. I think Deacon Brown has played a patient innings. Can somebody understand what I'm saying and give the Lord a praise in the house today? Hallelujah. I know, I know a lot of batsmen that came after Deacon Brown swing out and lost their wicket and them gone. But Deacon Brown stuck it in. Deacon Brown play a patient in ends. Both for the family, both for the community, and both for the church. And so God will give the glory. And so God will give the praise. Hallelujah. And this afternoon I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, when I got the, the news that Deacon Brown has passed on, I didn't hear Sister Brown told me that somebody kicked off his door and went in and interrupt. Hallelujah. But the word of God rightly reminds us that it is appointed unto man who wants to die. Oh, hallelujah. But after that comes the judgment. Hallelujah. And so therefore Deacon Brown had made his exit. He have only gone on before. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm saying to the bereaved family this evening, be of good courage. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. You shall see your brother again. Yes. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes. And so therefore, my brother and sister, it is about one year ago in the November, the first of November, I lost my mom. And she and she buried on the 8th of December. And since here again, my wife have lost her mom, died in October. You know, and so therefore it has been following from one year to the other. But this afternoon I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, we're here to give God thanks for life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm saying to us that are here today, let us not take life for granted. No. Let us handle with care. Yes. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Because we know that life is very fragile. Yes. And so because of that, my brothers and sisters, because life is so fragile, then Deacon Brown handle with care. Yes. And I just want you to turn with me to the book of St. John chapter 11 very quickly. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, her, her sister Martha. It was that which is anoint the Lord with ointment and wipe his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he, when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore he was sick, he abode two days till the same place where he was. Then after that said, he to his disciple, let us go into Judea again. His disciple said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and go to thou either again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the dark in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. These things he said, and after he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go and I awoke him out of his sleep. I'm going to read verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. 
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Now the Bible tells us in the book of St. John 11 that Mary and Martha and Lazarus, there were, these were three people who lived together. And I just, and I could imagine that Lazarus was the breadwinner for those two sisters. Amen. And I could imagine in those days they, they had a close relationship. And I could imagine that Lazarus was a community man as well. A person who loved his family. A person who cares for the family. Hallelujah. And because of that they had this relationship with the brothers and the sisters. Hallelujah. And, it, and I'm saying to the family this afternoon that it's good to live good. It's good that we can rock together. Because this reminds me of Mary and Martha when he, when he took sick. The scripture said they call, they send to call Jesus. And it's not like now when we have cell phone, maybe a two, three cell phone in our pocket and in our, and our waist, then we can make some call to call the family. But back then it was, they will have to send the message to Jesus by mouth and say, look here, my brother, whom thou lovest is sick. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me tell you something, brother and sister, Jesus wasn't too far from where they were. When I analyze it and look through it, Jesus was only but about two miles from them. But Jesus purposely delayed the process, hallelujah, and showed up four days later. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because the scripture said he wanted them to get to see the glory of the Lord. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But nevertheless, when they sent to call Jesus, Jesus didn't turn up at the time. And you know what it is when you sent to call somebody, then sometimes, as human beings, sometimes we begin to get upset. Yes. Yes, we begin to pass our, 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 our assertion and all of that. But nevertheless, my brothers and sisters, he may not come when you want him, but he will get there right on time. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. But the scripture said that Jesus abode there for four days, and while he was there, my brothers and sisters, he says to his disciples, I am going to awake Lazarus. But they thought that Lazarus was having an ordinary rest. They thought that Lazarus was tired and maybe having a sleep somewhere there about. But Jesus make it clear to them, said, look here, man, thy brother, that whom thou lovest, is dead. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm going there to awake him. Bless the name of Jesus. And I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, that in front till here today, that Deacon Brown is not dead. He's sleeping. Yes. Oh, hallelujah to God. For when the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and do the alive and remain oh hallelujah shall be caught up to meet him yeah. bless the name of Jesus so Deacon Brown is sleeping at this time he will be waking at the, at the day of the resurrection yeah. hallelujah yeah. but this, I'm, I'm trying to fast track a little bit because we know some of us are far to go and the road is very bad hallelujah but the scripture said that when Mary and Martha saw that Jesus was coming then Martha ran to meet him Oh, hallelujah. And he said, Lord, if thou, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Because they know the relationship with Jesus. They know the, 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 the relationship that Lazarus had with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just like Brother Brown, we know the relationship that he have with God. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe the wife don't know, but it's what God knows is the relationship that he have. And so therefore, my brothers and sisters, we can see how we express it when we go to church on a Sunday morning. Oh God, we can see how we, how we, how we act it out, when you, especially when you go into worship. And brothers and sisters, that tells me and you that he have a relationship with this man, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And that is the reason why I have nothing to worry about and I have nothing to fear about that Brother Brown have a relationship with this man, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes no money in the pocket, but he maintained the relationship. Oh, my God. Family may be against him, my brothers and sisters, but he maintained the relationship with Jesus. You don't have to say him any, anyhow, but I'm going to preach in the name of Jesus. They criticize him, but they maintain the relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless the name of
Lord Jesus. And I'm saying to the family member that lives so scatter, scatter in the community that don't care for each other. For God and heaven's sake, make we start live good. Make we start rectify it. Oh Lord God, the two and three weeks out of malice that no work anymore. We can't look your brother and sister, we strap up on the mouth. And we don't know what next is coming. Hallelujah to God. So let us, as the people of God, let us build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. And so when Martha saw Jesus is coming, we were coming at the time, the Bible said that he ran to meet Jesus. Oh, hallelujah to God. Somebody will wanted Jesus to feel embarrassed. Oh, Lord, because Jesus didn't show up at the time. Oh, Jesus. But I got to know that my brothers and sisters, he, he, he have a set appointed time. Oh, hallelujah to God. Because Deacon Brown couldn't leave her before the time. He his time was appointed. Oh, and because of that, my brothers and sisters, his name was called. Oh, hallelujah to God, his number were called. Because every one of us have a gate number. Every one of us have a cell number. Every one of us have a, have a house number. And because of that, his number called. Praise the name of Jesus. And somebody were complaining and said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And I could imagine Martha were crying like some of us. Oh, hallelujah to God and start to complain to Jesus. And I get somebody around the corner said, but this is stinking. Oh, Lord God Almighty, but look him and Jesus, God himself, want to show us. Oh, my God, that he's risen from the dead. That is a bomb in Gilead. He want to tell somebody this afternoon that doesn't care what you are going through. He's an untimed God. Yes, he is. Oh my God, member in your community put you down and write you off. Oh my God, but when they put you down, Jesus lift you up. Oh my God, Jesus turn it around. Oh hallelujah to God when Jesus showed up. Oh my God, Jesus said, show me where you bury him. Oh Lord God Almighty, some people wrap up some people. Some people tie up some people. Oh Lord Jesus, wondering where next. How what next? But he's an hand -tied. I'm God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Quickly, brother, sister, when they take Jesus down to the grave, there was a lot of grave around, just like how you're looking at it. Oh, Lord God Almighty, Jesus, show me where you bury him. And look here, people of God in front of you, sometimes you must cut out the complaint sometime and show Jesus the problem. Oh, my God, cut out the cherry, but bring come and show Jesus the problem. Am I talking to somebody here in front of you? Hallelujah, because he's a problem solver. He is a burden bearer. When you tell somebody your problem, let's take it to somebody else. Oh my God, I even see a plan video call you and send it away my brothers and sisters. But I'm here to tell somebody today that he's an hand time God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He may not come when you want him, but he will get there right on time. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so when they re reach down to the sepulchre, my brothers and sisters, Jesus has removed the stone. Yes. Hallelujah. And we think that some of the problems are going to solve by looking on the problem. If you have a heart against your brother, go and go fix it with your brother. If you have a heart against your sister, go fix it with your sister. Jesus said, remove the stone from the sepulchre. And Jesus put the stone there, but Jesus authorized Mary and Martha to remove the stone. Hallelujah to God. But live in a stone, envy in a stone, remove it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when they remove the stone, Jesus said, Lazarus. Jesus call him by name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus knew the relationship we have with Lazarus. He couldn't call nobody else. A lot of grave were around at the time, but Jesus called one person, Lazarus. Hallelujah to God, because if you suffer with Christ, you're going to reign with him. And if you and if you live for him, you shall rise to meet him. Oh, hallelujah to God, for when the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the hill. God bless you here to the people of God. And I'm saying to somebody here today who not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, seek a friend before you need a friend. Hallelujah. 
the axe is laid at the root of the tree any tree does not bring forth any fruit it shall be hewn down and cast into the fire seek a friend seek the lord while he may be found calling upon him while he is near hallelujah to god if somebody is here today want to give your heart to the lord the way he's open today the fact that we are at a funeral service we are only saying to our brothers tonight good night we are only saying good evening oh hallelujah to god his work is finished Deacon Brown work is finished. If you pass out a church and you say Deacon Brown in a church, it's not, I guess it's the wrong Deacon Brown they're going to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm saying to everyone this evening, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Before you die, before you die, my friend. Hallelujah. Before you die, before you die, before you die, let it build a relationship with Jesus. That's what matters. It's not about leaving Fire Baptist Church and go down to Batam Church or Side Church. It's about building a relationship with Jesus. That's what matters. Hallelujah. Amen. Lazarus have this relationship with Jesus. So when Jesus reached down at the graveside, Jesus knew the relationship he had with him. So I'm calling by name. He's calling somebody this evening. He's calling somebody name this evening. Hallelujah. If you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, all in at your heart. Now, Stephen, your neck. May God bless you here this evening. May God cast his face to shine upon you and give you this peace. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book, to your song sheet. <coughs> when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning break eternal bright and fair. When the saints and earth shall gather on the, on the other south shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And in the meantime, we're going to ask the Paul if they could please. Right after, you will work with the instruction. After that. So I hope you understand. Some grandchildren that wanted to have a real look at the. 